Donny Harrison inducted the Electric Light Orchestra into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Friday night, led by his father's former traveling Wilburys bandmate Jeff Lynn. The group has had many members come and go over the years, but the Hall of Fame only inducted keyboardist Richard Tandy, drummer Bev Bevan and multi-instrumentalist Roy Wood alongside Lynn. Bevan was unable to make it due to a prior commitment. Donnie grew up around Lynn, who produced his father's 1987 comeback LP Cloud 9 and stayed close with him for years afterwards. The singer talked about going to Cielo, his first rock concert with his father and the surprise he had when his dad jumped on stage with Lynn and Co. to play Johnny B. Good, read the full speech below. I'm truly honored to induct one of my all-time favorite bands, Electric Light Orchestra, into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I can't imagine any of us being here tonight, least of all myself, without the tremendous life and music of Chuck Berry and on behalf of my band, Nice One, Chuck. Now, if my father was still with us I would imagine he would be standing where I am right now graciously inducting the original members of the Ello into the Hall of Fame. He loved Ello. People loved Dello. I'd like to introduce the four original members who will be inducted tonight. The powerhouse drummer, Bev Bevan. With his rocking solo on Don't Bring Me Down, he oftentimes would bring the house down. Even the keyboard player, Richard Tandy. Still with him today but unfortunately not with us today. The groundbreaking multi-instrumentalist Roy Wood. He wrote many of Yellow's early songs. While Roy's time in the band may be shorter than the others, he will always be an architect of Yellow's DNA. Last and certainly least, just kidding, my dear, dear pal, Jeff Lynn. A great songwriter, producer, musical genius of our time, a rare genius, a real live legend. Yellow's mastermind for nearly 50 years. Jeff is one of my father's dearest friends and it was March of 1986 when I had my first close encounter of Yellow. My dad took me to a benefit concert in England. A massive arena packed to the roof for a headlining set by their hometown heroes. Bev, Richard and Jeff were all there. I remember it just like it was yesterday. This is my first big rock show. I was seven and a half and from my distinction. Yellow's performance that night was less like a regular rock band and more like what I think a 21st century extraterrestrial spaceman with bizarre instruments. Their songs sound like a symphony. I stood there in silent astonishment watching these guys offer up incredible songs like Evil Woman, Telephone Line, do ya, Mr. Blue Sky, right? I thought, why do I need to see anyone in our house playing such strange-looking instruments? I mean, we all had guitars in our house, but that guy had a tiny blue guitar jammed under his chin and that other guy has a massive big guitar on his side playing it. Very strange. Anyway, on stage, the band appeared to be having as much fun as we were. That's when I decided they reminded me of a Star Wars cantina band, only with lots more hair. Smoke all around in the air around them. The leader of the space band stood in the middle, singing falsetto like an angel. He seemed affable and occasionally he'd exchange pleasantries with us humans. We mean your planet, no harm. I wanted to be transported, beamed up, probed, whatever. I just wanted to join their team and never go back. So after a dozen or so songs my father gets up from his seat and tells me to wait for him with this candy man who had taken us to our seats. He walked off and moments after he disappeared from view suddenly he reappeared on stage. Carrying a guitar, I began to panic because this was first time I had ever seen my dad play an instrument ever on stage in my entire life out of nowhere in perfect unison they all kicked into johnny b good i remember thinking what is going on my father is being abducted by an intergalactic space orchestra 
Ello has taken my father and left me behind. The candy man assured that he would eventually be returned to us. So we made it back home together eventually and my joy and surprise with Ello. Extraterrestrial wizard captain, the man with it all, Jeff Lynn. He had come to live with us on Earth and Jeff was soon a permanent fixture at our house. Him and my dad drove the same car. We were a traveling family. I got to see Jeff work in his secretive ways off and late night. This was the dawn of an incredible blast of creativity for Jeff. He worked with Dad on Cloud9 and he produced Royce Mystery Girl. Co-wrote, co-produced Full Moon Fever. I began to learn the Jeff Lynn Studio lexicon you know words like Trilby and Model Scum. It's a tremendous category of artists that Jeff worked with Paul McCartney, Tom Petty, Joe Walsh. They aren't musicians who needed a lot of help but they just needed Jeff. During one of those sessions I began to realize that all of my dad's friends were in fact from outer space like Jeff. You could tell because of their eyes, right? Their eyes were far more sensitive to Earth's bright sun. They communicated with each other via jukeboxes and secret messages through records. These UFO-esque machines that I came to discover were the albums of Ello. Starting from disc 1, track 1 of the New World Record. It just starts so quietly that I had to turn it up and then the terrifying sound of my roof. Caving in straight into the giant orchestral arrangement with a choir with big strums and that. Laser guitar, you're allowed to start a record like that? Somebody actually wrote an album like that and my life was changed. And years later, on a personal level, it hits back to home. When my father was lost we were trying to find a record, it seemed we had run out of time. But he told me seek out once again that space wizard. Jeff and that together we would know what to do. Jeff knew exactly how to cross that bridge. And within the process I finally learned what Trilby meant. Yes, I actually speak fluent Jeff now. Working with Jeff is one of the most amazing times I've ever had. Seeing those beautiful blue eyes peeking over the top of those space lenses has carried me through some of the toughest musical moments of my life and for that I thank you. Ello is alive and well in the galaxy. There were Ello sightings last year at Glastonbury. They were seen by hundreds of thousands of people over at Hyde Park. I saw Ello two nights in a row over the Hollywood Bowl. It was in November right after the election and trust me when I tell you I was staring at their spaceship thinking, take me with you. I saw some kids there that could have been seven and a half and more of them that were probably 77 and a half all wanting to get beamed up. Jeff thank you for bringing the spaceship back with that Mr. Blue Sky laser guitar sound. Tonight is about celebrating the beginning, the birth. That Big Bang in 1970 when we all welcomed Ello, right? It's to celebrate these four superbly talented musicians, Roy, Bev, Richard, and Jeff who didn't always get along, but who were there in the beginning. Willing to throw down together on these joyous rock classical harmonies, these killer songs that have lived longer than any of us now. Somewhere around in a musical galaxy right between Chuck Berry and Beethoven. And so it's my great, great honor on behalf of all the humans that voted for this. Because on some other planet I'm sure they've already done this. To induct Ello into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame.